Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Element of Express series by Sonali Skibo. And I'm here, the founder, Vajanti Pugalia. Very excited about today's session because um, it's a session very close to each woman, each mother, each human being. Um, because I believe that the parent-child interaction is the most powerful um, mental health uh, in, uh, you know, interaction. It's the most splendid spiritual manifestation which is known to humankind. And um, having a child is a very conscious decision, uh, but what comes with it is responsibilities. What comes with, this, with it is active parenting. And I think in the times that we are right now, one thing which becomes a hallmark of contemporary parenting is the word anxiety. And that is what we are here going to be talking today. And um, because I believe that the geography of the entire childhood has become very contracted. And uh, the, the time that we are spending indoors has really manifested. It has really mounted. And uh, the time that we adults are going to be giving to monitor what our children are doing in front of the screen is definitely increasing to its peak. And to talk all about that, uh, I have with me uh, my very dear friend and um, an amazing person, uh, Jasmine Kumar. Welcome, Jasmine, to my show. Thank you for inviting me, Uber. So, yes, viewers, Jasmine is a national award winning educationist. She's an author, speaker. Uh, a parenting coach and uh, she runs uh, the most uh, famous startup uh, in terms of preschool and her preschool is, uh, ranges the top three preschools in Noida and the name being Ray's uh, International Preschool. She's also the founder of the Empowered Parents Forum. A lot of interaction happens there. A lot of uh, exchange of knowledge happens there. And we will be knowing more about it in our due conversation with Jasmine. So Jasmine, it's splendid that you are here with me today. And uh, before we move to the main topic of today's conversation, which is parenting during COVID times, I would like to uh, you know, begin today's session by asking you something that, uh, what made you inclined towards education? Uh, that is something uh, which is, uh, I really want to know, that what made you become an award-winning educationist? Well, uh, okay, I think it's been quite some time that I've actually thought about it because it's been like almost a decade. It's been quite an interesting journey of my career so far from contemplating while I was working with IBM India. From there, moving on to uh, doing something which I was passionate about. And back inside my mind, I knew that there were going to be hardships that I would encounter. It was equivalent to jumping off the cliff without carrying a parachute for the safe landing, perhaps. But I think I did pretty well. Uh, as you have just mentioned that my school is considered to be amongst top three preschool and daycare centers in the city. So of course it's, it goes a lot with the kind of team that I have, you know, who's, who's been working with me. So uh, getting into education had been a long-term passion for me and I'm very happy to live this passion a little early in my life. Perhaps it's in my genes because my mom too had been an educationist uh, in her career days. And, uh, but yes, there were two incidences, two episodes, which kind of triggered me to take this leap so early in life. So while I was working with IBM in Bangalore, uh, there was a very dear friend of mine and uh, she came from a very humble background. This, this actually gives me goosebumps the minute I think about it because she was working as, uh, at one of the very uh, you know, top-notch level into a corporate uh, organization. And one day she had been asked to quit not by her organization, but uh, by her extended family. And the reason being, because she is a mom now. Can you imagine? And at the same she time... She her career because she became a mom. She became a mom. So there was, oh. was a non-supportive family. Perhaps the husband didn't have that kind of a say to the family and the parents. So uh, she had no choice but to go ahead and, you know, just turn away from that uh, pinnacle of success where she had reached despite all the challenges that her parents had a handful of money to uh, you know put for her education a lot many factors goes into reaching at at a place 
Another thing, uh, since I was working in HR and IBM, so we had organized uh, diversity hire drives, so where we were encouraging women who have taken sabbatical to get back to the workforce. Mm -hmm. So on the day of the hiring, I mean, I still remember the environment was so toxic, you know. So there was women who were accompanied by their husbands and some of them also had children along with them. So uh, it, it was all over their face, you know, that guilt that who's going to look after my child if I step out of home to follow and chase my dreams, my passion, which uh, I always wanted to do. Anybody can take up this job, but I'm going to be the only mother to this child. You know, so that toxicity was there in the environment and it was <clears throat> pulling me down so much. So that actually triggered me. So I just walked up to my boss, told him I'm putting down my papers and I just booked my tickets back home. That's exactly where my journey as an educationist began. You know, when you uh, are your own boss, it's easier to imagine than realize, right? You're an entrepreneur yourself, so you understand it pretty well. There had been instances where I felt that I'm going to fail, but simultaneously, I also knew that in any minute, I will be able to pull this rabbit out of the hat. So it's been quite an interesting journey. So there had been hardships, of course, and uh, I'm very proud I that I've turned down to... the, the IBM job in India to and to pursue your dream. Uh, yes. So was it like all close by here? And it was a big risk that you took, you know, coming from a, a place which would have been a very flourishing career with IBM. And then now here you are taking a risk, probably in a stream, because I have this question A, the risk factor, how calculative was that? Because it is very important to, uh, for women, you know, when they take this leap of faith into the unknown, coming from you entrepreneurs who leave a successful or, you know, uh, a very easy paved out road and heading out to the unknown. I really want your, uh, a sort of a tip. Uh, what do you want to say to these women who, uh, you know, want to take this leap of faith, A, and B, when you entered the preschool industry then, because I know the time that you'd started, I, I, I remember that time when I'd met you, uh, what was the kind of market? And do you think that the market is different from then and now? Okay, so we a couple of things. The first and the foremost thing is one has to be passionate about whatever you want to do in life, you know? Yeah. You will always encounter, uh, you will always go through the, you know, stormy weather. Yeah. But all that is required is your passion, first of all. If you are passionate about what you want to do in life, the universe will fall into place. So that is the most important thing. Getting into the leap of entrepreneurship, of course, is not very easy. Like I said, because you have so many factors to look into place. Uh, so there are controllable factors. There are uncontrollable factors. When you talk about controllable factors, it's about clarity of your vision, putting a team together who can share that vision and bring it forward, uh, understanding your market, you know, where you're venturing out, how fruitful is that business proposition? Is it going to earn you? Because if, it's, if you're not a charitable organization, you're here to make money. So of course you need to have your own checks into place that what is the demand, what is the supply. So all that market search is very, very important. So any industry that you get into, uh, you know, entrepreneurship. So all these ground level research, which is in your control, is yeah. important that you need to do checks and balances, right? Uh, of course, uh, when you talk about funding, that always is one big, you know, roadblock which everybody, it, it re hits really hard to everyone. So you need to be calculative when it comes to your finances as well. Where is the, the uh, inflow of money going to come from? If you have that much liquidity of funds to play around with, then go ahead. There are banking schemes. There are, uh, you know, banks are offering a lot of uh, products on, you know, interest to the uh, people who are into what, yeah. who, are, who are starting up their ventures. So I think things are available in the market. Uncontrollable factors, for example, now we are live in COVID situation. So this is one of the uncontrollable biggest factor after World War II, I would say, which has hit the whole world at the same time. So uncontrollable factors can never be uh, curtailed because it's all about adaptability. In any business, uh, you will always encounter stormy weathers. It's just that you have to keep chasing, keep adjusting, keep adapting yourself with how the industry is changing, how the dynamics are changing. So that is one thing. And how many years it's been uh, since you started, Jasmine, your, your series of Race, Race International? We started in 2006 and I left my career with IBM in 2000 and, uh, um, 2005. So this is how the journey happened.
right and uh, do you think there is a shift in the in 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 the you know the the adaptations or the market because definitely it's an industry in in itself preschool is definitely an industry and uh, even in kolkata i see so many preschools coming closing reopening uh, rebranching from the mainstream from uh, more metropolitan cities how far do you think this this entire uh, you know this business uh, do you do you feel there's a shift in it absolutely it is you know i'll tell you primarily why the shift is it has finally got government's eye you know it's an industry preschooling early child care education it does not have any godfather when i say it doesn't have any godfather because it does not fall under the purview of mhrd there are no government rules and regulations so anybody who ever wants to uh, get into preschooling industry it's very easy because there are no regulations so it has its pros and cons both so there are 70% more than 70% of unorganized uh, preschools which are you know running which are not registered leaving aside um, states now in our country which is tamil nadu and karnataka who have actually started registering the preschools now and which is very important to have certain guidelines certain rules and regulations into place when i said it has caught government's uh, attention because now the investment that they're looking in india that is definitely increasing uh, when it comes to preschool industry but now post covid times i'm not too sure because the, the pace at which you know the things are changing i just hope because you know the entire schooling and education system have has moved from offline to online so bots will depend on the budget next year that's true um now next i really want to know about breakthrough the book that you have authored so yes i really want you to share your views on that please okay i have a copy of breakthrough with me so when we all get a sneak preview to it <laughs> so this is my one of the proud possessions breakthrough so this book has been co-authored by 17 dynamic women across the globe and this we launched in 2018 at uh, women economic forum and that's precisely where uh, all the beautiful women who can who you, you can see here we all met there see uh, this is actually an example a true example of when women join hands together incredible things can happen so this is actually a true example I remember some of us we met at Women Economic Forum. That's perhaps we also met with Jenty, right? A uh, small world it is. So uh, we just kind of connected, you know. We all had stories. We all had uh, so much to talk about that, you know, it, it's this, it's such strong stories. Which how did we bounce back? We all had achieved our breakthroughs into life. So how did we bounce back? uh what are our success stories so we just thought that why don't we collaborate and you know put together a book and it feels uh, it gives me so much of immense pleasure you know when people come back to me and tell me that you know they actually treat this book as a bible it's like a uh, <laughs> you know they can relate to so many stories and it kind of encourages them every time when they happen to flip through the pages so this is what the reality is and the best part about this book is this is a not for profit initiative so all the proceeds from this book are going to a charitable organization called proksahan it's an india based uh, uh, ngo so they are working very extensively on giving education to the girl child so i'm very happy that all the people who have contributed in terms of uh, purchasing our books and going through them and they have they have actually contributed a lot at a larger scale so it's it's amazing it's it's a, it's all about secrets of growth mindset success stories of women and yes it's about uh, that you know from can i to i can which <clears throat> and you're on mute sorry sorry uh, jasmine my next question to you is that uh, there's so many preschools around all right what do you think makes a preschool unique raise international is doing so well and uh, the the main motive of educationists at the end of the day is to impart the best uh, impart what is going to be with the children for long and preschool happens to be like you know a, a phase where they are just building up because uh, now the times are different but yes we can say that most of the time the children that they spend in their early days to much later years are in the school so what do you think is the uniqueness which a preschool can come up with because uh, there's something that really strikes me because around my place there must be like four preschools mm -hmm. and though i know i 
across the stage uh, being a mother of two teenagers now and one adult actually so I, I don't have to look much into it but yes I want to understand the uniqueness with which educationists should impart knowledge to the preschools because that happens to be the foundation years of one's life right so in one word it's personal care and touch you know you have to understand the child from the child psychology perspective what sets rays apart and why we were able to uh, you know succeed so early in life you know within just six months of being into operation we were ranked and awarded as the top 10 preschools that time so um, it's all about if you talk about uniqueness so there is nothing much unique it's it's an infrastructure which is aesthetically designed we have a beautiful team of people who are visionary they understand we have customized solutions which the parents would need it's a service industry you know because it's education plus we have a day and a night care center so my vision was to empower women so that they can work guilt free they can step out of home they don't have to think about their children so we have uh, our night center which is open till 12 o'clock in the midnight and which we are gradually post covid let's see how the situation goes so we might ex extend the timings as well and yeah. we are seeing um, a lot of uh, you know uh, good response from the parents as well because it is like an extended support arm for them so the reason why they are happy with our services is because of the care the personal touch uh, being always available for the parents understanding their concerns if they have because every child is different everybody's parenting style is different every poor parent has a different set of requirements you know so it becomes too difficult at times to understand uh, so many instructions of so many people so to have sufficient uh, staff is very important thing so that because when you're talking about younger kids as younger as six months old because we have a separate infant care center as well so there you need that kind of a staff you know you can't have uh, one person looking after four infants you know so that kind of a ratio needs to be maintained so personal touch understanding the child uh, you know, children also have mood swings. So you need to manage them, you know, not by saying no, but by empathizing with them, by being into their shoes, uh, taking full care, safety precautions, health precautions, everything in totality. So I think this is something very, very important when you talk about younger children. Yes, I think these are very, very important points which you've mentioned, you know, which makes one preschool uh, stand out amongst the rest. Um, next, Jasmine, one thing which really intrigues me is We've talked about the safety and we've talked about the hygiene and we've talked about the personal touch. Uh, what do you have to say in terms of the method? Like we Indians at preschool, uh, are we like more uh, sort of uh, intimidated with the Western approach? And is that what we are incubating in our preschools? Or do we have um, a lot of, uh, you know, our own Indian roots that uh, we sort of exercise at this level. So uh, as an educationist, uh, what do you implement and how far do you think our preschools are <laughs> under the pressure of that? Right. See, Vijanti, uh, when it comes to health and hygiene, there is, uh, you cannot divide it as per the country specific or we cannot you know, just get carried away by Western culture because when you talk about health of the child, hygiene of the child, it has to, it's pervasive, it has to be everywhere. Uh, like I said, it's an unorganized industry. There are people who are working without any registrations. There are small players who are working from home. So there are no standard guidelines by the government. It is not driven by the central government. There are no set of... Uh, health standards and practices to be maintained by uh, education stand you know preschools all across the uh, india i would say so it is not that we are carried away by the western culture but we are we do understand like we have uh, you know our dietitians on board we have people into the healthcare industry who are on board with us who constantly guide us what are the do's what are the don'ts we have uh, visits from the hospital staff as well the nursing staff who train our staff that you know how you first need to take care of your own personal hygiene before you even go and meet the staff uh, you know pick up the children so sanitizing your hands how to lift the baby how to feed the child burping is uh, you know one of a very critical thing when you talk about in France so these are small little things that uh, you know goes a long way in terms of ensuring that you know the health standards are uh, we, we keep a check on the health standards of our own staff and also we keep a check on the health and hygiene of our children and the environment as well so it is not that we are too intimidated with the western culture but yes uh, we've tried to incubate what is positive 
what can run best what can practices run. Yeah. it's the best practices so we have our in house safety standards we have our own uh, rule book which is of on health and hygiene standards so that we very stringently follow yes i think that is intelligent as to what to adapt and how far yet be rooted to uh, our indian uh, you know background is something because i think the entire uh, you know the 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 formation of one's thoughts is something which is very closely drived at this level now coming to today's uh, discussion right. which happens to be something which i'm really look forward to jasmine is parenting during covid times uh, a very very intriguing uh, topic a need of the hour what do you think is the parents role in such times in such such as you said the times after the probably after the world war 2 so right. what do you think is the parents role here See, Vijayanti. Let me tell you honestly. What all we are challenging and struggling right now is with the adaptability issues. You know, change is something which is inevitable, and it doesn't come easy to the you know people. It's a human psychology. Whenever change uh, knocks at our door, we always kind of close ourselves, isn't it? So this is what it is happening. There is a. Uh, there are a lot of fears there are a lot of uncertainties around um, about family about your own future of work about how the world is changing how things are going to be so there are there are a lot of question marks around everywhere right so this is why uh, it is taking so much of a toll on the parents uh, to manage uh, this lockdown situation uh, it is not just the parents you know even kids they are also gradually adapting they are not used to with this model of staying at home we are adults when we are finding it so challenging and difficult i mean even our children they want their park time they want to go to the school they want to meet their friends they want to go to the birthday parties they just don't want to have those zoom lockdown parties anymore so it is difficult to even make them understand that this is the new normal right so it is a very critical situation so as a part, so first important thing which i want to suggest to the parents is that you need to first focus on your own self you know make yourself the number one priority stop putting your expectations onto your children and to the family members you know first fill your own cup of happiness because if your cup of happiness is empty what will you give to your family your relations your children and to everybody around right so this is the most important thing try to find ways in which you can calm yourself relax yourself if the society is or wherever you are living if you are allowed to step out even for 20 minutes 30 minutes go for a quick run or a jog or do some workout at home breathing exercises or even maybe a, a relaxing cup of tea can just kind of energize you and just you know kind of uh, compose you don't react to the children because we get so frustrated all the time for example i have just finished cleaning and my children is just you know spilling the toys everywhere so it is going to just trigger the uh, emotions of the parent and they end up reacting they end up yelling getting frustrated and uh, if you are a traditional parent you know you might even end up spanking your children so in this whole process you might end up achieving what you are intending to achieve but you will lose a very important thing that is a moment to connect with your child so and and another thing which i want to talk about is vijayanti we don't realize i always tell my parents that stop parenting your children so when i say stop parenting your children how would you feel if your boss walks around in the house all the time you would not like it right nobody wants anybody uh, to keep on giving advice all the time of course it hurts hurts the neck when you keep on looking up isn't it so um stop giving advice to your children all the time try to be their buddy you know parenting is not about children parenting is about you it's about your inner self so you need to understand yourself before preaching to your children before advising to them it is difficult for them as well they are also learning they are also adapting it is okay if they are reacting it is okay if they are uh, you know not listening to you at times so give them some space it is you you're not eventually raising a mini me of yours right? right so this is something which i would definitely want parents to kindly be it's like we about. we get our frustrations to them where where we get hypered with our own mental frame and we are trying to just drop it on to them is something that at first step you're asking us to control so vijayanti it is not just dropping you know so this dropping is actually a parental ego right you know 
it's a parental ego which comes roaring in full velocity and ferocity. And all our desires from ourselves, you know, our, all our wishes that we manifested and are unfulfilled, it comes on to our children, you know, as an emotional baggage. The child loves his parents and he doesn't even know what is happening. So he would just blindly keep on following what the parents are asking them to do. And is, but at the same time, he's also getting distended from his own authentic self. And then you have a teenager who is confused, who doesn't know what needs to be done. And you cannot connect with your teenager. You feel that my child has become arrogant now. And my teenager uh, wants to be alone. He doesn't want to socialize. So this is where we, at the foundation level, get this thing incorrect. So parents do watch out for it. And what do you have to say in such times? How can we, we can be more constructive and more mindful in our approach towards the children? Because yes, yes, you did say that we need to watch ourselves first. We need to take care of ourselves first. We need to be calm first. But then what about the second step of now the interaction bit with the children where we right. need to be super calm with them now and we need to be more constructive with them. So how do we handle that? See, whenever we want to get any job done by anyone, it's important that you first build a connection, whether it's your friend, whether it's your employee, whether anybody, you need to have that kind of a connect. So same dynamics have works even with a parent and a child relationship. If you want your children to listen to you, if you want your children to, uh, you know, follow and uh, the instructions, the way you are acting as a guide to them, you must connect with them first. So how do you connect with them constructively? Now, uh, Lockdown is kind of a blessing, you know, it's the other side of the coin, I would say. We have always cribbed about not having sufficient time with us, but now we have all time in the world. At least spend daily basis, minimum 20 minutes with your children. When I say 20 minutes, that should be a gadget free time. No mobile phones, that, you know, dinner can be cooked after 20 minutes, that phone call can be answered after 20 minutes, that email can be sent after 20 minutes. So it's a 20 minutes undivided attention where you are gadget free, where you let the child decide how he or she would want to spend those 20 minutes with you. So whether it's Lego play, whether it's story, whether it's uh, even watching something on television, whatever the child wants to do, because then the child feels wanted, is <coughs> important, and the child also feels that, yes, I have, I'm a valuable, uh, you know, part of the society, uh, you know, this, uh, this family. So my family, my father, my mother, they want to spend time with me because they love me, you know, so to feel this feeling is very important as the base to get that kind of a connection made. So to begin with, spend minimum 20 minutes. Uh, if you are a parent of an infant, uh, you can, you know, try to sing some lullabies to them, make some funny facial expressions. So infants love doing that. If you are a parent of a toddler, you can play some blocks with them, Lego play, do some story. If you don't have sufficient story books at home, you can create your own funny stories. You know, you can become the Goda Billy, whatever you want to do. And it's fun to actually do and imitate things like this with our children. And if you are a parent... This is an add-on of these times, you know, where we never got this time to do with our children and now we can. So yes, um, yes, please go on, Jasmine, because to hear about it, it's anyway so beautiful. Yes, please go on. And if you talk about the parents you know, having teachers, um, my son is speaking from there. Hi, just give me 10 minutes, I'll be back. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if you are a parent of a teenager, uh, teenagers love adventure. You know, now when they're in a the lockdown, you can play some sports with them. You can kind of convert your house uh, where you can kind of make a playground. You can play some cricket. You can sit with them, talk about things that they enjoy doing, be it uh, any sports, any, any activity for that matter. So it's all about connecting with them. You can take their help in doing some chores at home. You can cook together. Uh, you can give them some work, which, is, which makes them feel more responsible. You know, when you are a parent of a teenager, they love getting responsibility. You can even try to, uh, you know, tell them that why don't we sit together and put the budget of this entire month of our house. That's Trust me, it's a beautiful exercise to do. If you are actually making the child responsible that, you know, let's identify what are the needs of our family in this month and how do we intend to play around with this money for this month. So they would definitely love to do it. You know, they feel responsible that yes, um, it's, it's some responsibility that I've got and I've got to do this. So it's quite a thrill in their life. 
So I think these are certain tips if the parents can actually implement uh, in this lockdown. It will not only help you connect with your children, but this bond is going to go a long way. Yes, I think it's very beautifully put, Jasmine, that these things that you'll be sharing, the platform that you'll be building, where you're doing things together, where it is, whether it is playing a game or uh, dividing responsibilities or doing the house chores or doing some errands together, making them feel important and uh, making them realize that, you know, this is just a very temporary phase, but we are there together as a unit is something very important that you said. And to this, what do you want to say to the parents about the different don'ts, which they tend to overlook? They don't know that we should not be doing this, which may be acting um, against the child. Uh, you know, so do's, yes, we know we can do so much now, Jasmine. But what about the don'ts, uh, if you would want to emphasize on that as well? A don'ts for the parents, you mean to say? Yes, the don'ts mm -hmm. for the parents. See, like I suggested, first is that make yourself a priority. Don't take so much of stress on yourself that you just lose it. Because uh, to run a family, you are like a backbone for your children. So first of all, you need to be fit. You need to be the best version of yourself. If you feel that you're not the best version of yourself, you cannot give the right environment for your children to grow and thrive and develop. Right. So that is very important because children around us are just like black CDs. Whatever is happening in the environment, it eventually gets recorded. And after a few years, when that CD plays, you wonder what kind of songs is it playing? Did I even record that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, we have to be very watchful about it. Model a good behavior. Uh, I'll give you small examples and you know these are very practical things. If somebody comes to your house, which of course in lockdown is not happening these days, and you are probably not in a good mood to meet that person or something. And you tell your child that please tell that mama is not at home or papa is not at home. And tomorrow you wonder where did my child pick up how to lie? Right. Right. So these are small little things which we do in our routine. So watch yourself. You know, you have to model the right behavior. I mean, right. if you tell your child not to scream and shout and you as a couple are fighting right in front of your children, you have to be watchful about certain things. Arguments will happen, and especially in lockdown. Uh, Vijayanti, I get to hear about so many parents' stories that, you know, as a couple, there are little suppressed emotions. You are not used to with the being with each other 24 hours. I mean, there had been a schedule, there had been a routine. Now there is a spurt of emotions which have all been there in your subconscious mind and everything is just popping out now. So if you are having any kind of a conflict happening in between the couple, try to avoid doing that in front of the children. So that is something which is very, very important because for a child, they want to see a happy family. You know, they want to see happy faces around. And more than the words, they understand expressions on the face. So I'm not asking you how people to act it out in front of the children, but then kind of uh, compose yourself, you know. Uh, think twice before reacting. Try to take a pause, breathe in, breathe out, and then react, you know. And if you feel that <clears throat> if the child is not listening to you, do not give a knee-jerk reaction, which usually parents end up doing it. And deep inside our heart, we know that it's not the right answer, which comes in the heat of the moment. And after that, we go on to the guilt trip, right? Lower down your expectations uh, from the children and to, from the family. Everybody needs a little space, especially in the lockdown situation. So give them that kind of a relaxing environment. Let them also have their own privacy, uh, respect their privacy, including your own. Um, you know what, Vijayanti, when I say expectations, you know, um, expectations as a parent, you know, it begins as early as the child is born. True. We have expectations from an imaginary baby. The imaginary baby whom you could <clears throat> cuddle, snuggle and sleep throughout the night. And when you have a real baby in your hand, you feel that what happened to that imaginary baby? This I baby know. does not over, looks like that. This one doesn't sleep. So you feel devastated, you know, you feel that you start yelling, crying yourself by locking yourself in the washroom might have made that freak out call to your best friend in the midnight. So, so many things we do, we start comparing ourselves with other parents that how have they all sorted it out and why not me? So stop comparing yourself uh, with other parents as well, because there is no, uh, you know, one size fits approach, which is there in parenting. Right. So, 
stop comparing stop expecting lower down your expectations these expectations are from your own self not from the children and give them space so these are certain things which i feel is very important another thing is uh, to put some structure into your day to day life is again something important because in lockdown there are no fixed time for breakfast no fixed time for lunch and dinner and if children have their online classes um, you know that's the only time when they get to study screen time is increasing so lot many things are happening around you need to have structure and systems into place so when i say structure it should not be a uh, very rigid it should be a bit flexible but there has to be consistency into it for example you can ask your child to sit with you and make a little timetable for the house you know for for his day how he would like to spend his day if he has 3 hours or 4 hours of online classes happening so put that into the timetable ask the child to add some play time into it or things he enjoys doing whatever he wants to do so there has to be a systematic structure into place so that uh, once the you know lockdown also open so it is not difficult for children also to get back into the old routines perhaps if it is possible to happen that way uh, sometime near soon so structure is important and like i said modeling the right behavior if you are putting structures for your children you also need to implement the same sure. so it should not be that your breakfast is happening at an xyz yeah. hours and you are expecting your child to eat uh, at the fixed time yeah so these certain things if parents do is um, going to really help well one thing that really uh, sort of uh, shakes me up and this i i myself felt when but with my daughter you know when she started her online classes uh, just you see that is the number of hours which is increased in front of the screen yes. and even your probably your interaction with the friends uh, as you say in form of whatever you call them play time play talks on zoom or whatever again that screen time if there is any website where you're playing a game or you're doing a worksheet again it's a screen time so it is so much of screen time that they land up either with a headache or you know the eyes are watering or uh, you know it's it's too much it's too much of stress i think which adds up so do you have anything to say to it again does it just boils down to monitoring the time that you're spending in front of the screen but it's such a helpless situation because the child would play the child needs to attend uh, in attendance uh, whatever the 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 preschool timing set is so there is so much happening in front of the screen and this i'm just not concerned in 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 you know in tune with the younger children even with the older ones like i have a 16 year old who faces the same problem what do you have to say about that jenny as ironic it may sound that you know we as educationists have always put our foot down in reducing the screen time and we are the ones who have brought the online classes into their life you know so but this is the need of our we can't do away with it because this is the new normal this is how the future of education would be if not for a longer time but at least temporarily and uh, when you talk about screen time you know i would like to suggest to the parents that if you have your children lesser than 5 years of age please try to reduce the screen time as far as possible to not more than 1 hour you know even in our preschool the program that we have designed <clears throat> we ensure that you know children are not uh, busy and looking at the screen all the time so our programs are such that it's like 4 minute video 5 minute video so the child is because first of all they don't have that much of patience to sit and keep on watching and looking at the teacher or some animated activities yeah. that we are doing <clears throat> so we don't want children to kind of continue keep on looking that so they watch the videos and we want parents to un- make them understand in an activity form so which is like more of an hands on activity so if you're preschool your child's preschool is not following something like that then try to understand the curriculum yourself not uh, making your child watch the whole video and do that activity hands on with your children of course it requires patience it requires your efforts as a parent and uh, and your time as well but this is how you have to do it and you can't do away with technology from their life let's uh, be realistic you can't snatch away the televisions you can't snatch away the ipads you can't snatch away the phones because we are the ones who out of our own comfort handed over to them at the first place isn't it yeah. when they were yeah. eating and we were it's not out of love that we bought ipad to, our to children. make our lives easier and that the child eats yes true right absolutely yeah 
so screen time definitely needs to be reduced uh, don't feel that you know now right now if i have a webinar going on i can put conveniently a television for my child no this is a wrong approach even if you're busy doing something try to engage your child with some activities you also try spending 20 minutes time with your children because the more you will be engaged the more uh, you will keep your children occupied there will definitely be a lesser amount of uh, screen time add variety of activities into their day to day schedule because then boredom comes once they start getting bored uh, picking up laptop or watching tv is an easy escape for them then you know so structure that day with the variety of activities which has blend of fitness also into it you can do yoga together you can do some even just play to music and start dancing with your child how simple is that you don't have to do too much right so add variety of activities keep your children engaged do leave a little bit room for boredom as well because that's where their creativity also comes out uh, in place and do be watchful for screen time don't snatch away the things uh, in a knee jerk way but make your children understand as well to the extent possible i know it's difficult for the younger generation but at least for the elder ones uh, you can kind of connect with them make them understand that don't say that don't watch it because this is a negative way of putting your uh, message across but then the child's mind gets rewired to the negative words they know ki mama to aise hi bolti hai they will say papa to aise hi bolte hai unko to hamesha advice karna hai unko hamesha mana karna hai so this is the child's thought about his parents the minute they start uh, correcting their children so rather than saying no you can say okay uh, can we watch television you know so you can give them some options if the child is not studying it's just watching television so you can say when do you intend to study rather than saying up uh, But study, yeah, okay. yeah, or trying to like point a finger. Exactly. So rather than always acting like a dominant parent, it's better that you know you try connecting with your children, give them some option, respect their choices as well, because then they always feel that whatever I do, I'm never valued. That is really very beautifully said. And finally, Jasmine, I have this very important question to you. Where <laughs> we are in the times right now, definitely we are bringing these changes. our approach towards our child probably we are becoming more conscious because we have to monitor the screen time we have to monitor as you said give our personal touch ourselves which probably the teachers were giving uh, previously at the preschool but we are in this pandemic which has left us so much of uncertainty around and maybe this is here to stay for some time and there's so much of anxiousness which is being developed what do you have to say to uh, the future Uh, of the teaching that uh, you know like you know a lot of parents probably must be thinking that this is a very temporary phase which is right but at the same time the importance of adapting and uh, taking the lessons taking the activities seriously because maybe this situation is here even after the lockdown is open you know maybe this situation is practiced more by the government especially for the younger children that they can run the curriculums from home uh, so how important do you think uh, this is for the parents to understand and secondly where as an educationist do you see the future in it uh, for the betterment of the child uh, as in virtual teaching and definitely in person teaching right uh, visually who would have imagined to run a preschool without having a personal touch you know especially for the little children it's so important for 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 them to be present in the environment for them to connect with the teacher and connecting through gadgets and technology is definitely very challenging especially for children who are of age group between 2 to 5 years but uh, necessity is the need of our as we say uh, within just a week's time and overnight i am i'm so proud of this entire fraternity of uh, educationists in our country and in fact worldwide for that matter that in just no time we have put together systems into place uh, where we can ensure that there is continued learning happening for children uh, right. you know, because this is what this profession is all about it's all about it's all about you know the the, the noble profession i would say so uh, it's important that you know we kind of see this is here to stay this yeah. is here to stay it is the the education is changing at a very very faster pace and uh, uh, through technology of course the um, what do you call uh, hello uh i think we have just lost uh, uh jasmine's uh 
connection. Uh, sorry, viewers, I think Jasmine uh, has just dropped out of the connection because of the internet. Yes, yes, there she comes, there she comes. Just a second, please. Uh, Jasmine will be just connecting back on, uh, just... I'm so sorry, I just lost the connection. Oh no, it's perfectly fine. And we are definitely used to this now because uh, this comes with a package of being technology savvy. Jasmine, are you there? Right. Yeah. So I can, stop. can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Please go on. So I was uh, just to coming back to the question, uh, uh, we were discussing that how this time is here to stay and how the parents need to adapt to this. And as an educationist, your views on, uh, you know, how far it's going to be productive for the children. So yes, Jasmine, please go on. Important that, you know, the online program needs to be designed in a way that uh, lot of new skills are added in the child's learning so it does not uh, try to decrease the screen time as far as possible so this is my message which goes out to all the educationists out there if your school is designing the online curriculum try to reduce the screen time as far as possible give them more engaging activities uh, hands-on uh, learning uh, see what is maths if you ask me I can even teach maths to my child while I'm cooking in the kitchen with you know taking is a little help if we are baking cookies this is something which we even did for our own preschool children we gave them an activity of baking cookies so it is like a life skill as well you know you learn to cook and it's again a connect time between the parent and the child um, so we just asked the children to make 10 doughs you know so you have to count one two three four five six so this is how they are we are doing the recap of our numbers as well right. so this is how you're blending education along with uh, teaching them life skills as well so try to give them more hands-on learning where their creativity comes out, where their thinking and thought process comes out. Because children are very smart these days. They're, they're very intelligent. And even our program is based on the multiple intelligences of the child. You know, right. every human being has eight intelligences. So this is how our uh, you know, curriculum also is based upon. So this is what I suggest the educationist also to decrease the dependency of the child on the screen as far as possible. Give them more activities which are more creative. Now coming to the parents. Uh, parents definitely need to have a lot of patience when it comes to the online learning. And they need to first accept the fact that this is how the life is going to be. This is how the teaching is going to happen at least for some time if it's if not the lifetime. Okay. Uh, so adapting themselves, uh, putting their own tech technology into place, making out the time that yes, I have to take out at least one hour every day for my child is important because otherwise, uh, you know, it you, you take it as an additional load uh, along with the zillions of chores which you're doing at home because no, you're not just a mother now, you're also a teacher to your child. So right. you are having a lot of responsibilities. So to become a teacher overnight for a parent also is a nightmare. Right. So I am really thankful to the fraternity of parents also who are doing such a commendable job by having that kind of a patience with the children and uh, yeah, just, just hang in there and keep going. So I think that is very beautifully said by Jasmine where she sends out a message to the educationist that yes, we do need to reduce the screen time and incorporate more life skills into the teaching and sort of uh, work a collaboration between that because that is also going to help our child in due course and uh, you know in decreasing the screens uh, time is going to give some more uh, you know candid and uh, more um, uh, in-person uh, concentration with the parents that the child can observe and um, I really like the time when uh, Jasmine you pointed out that the boredom is something which is going to give rise to creativity how beautifully put because yes uh, boredom is going to give rise to, rise to creativity because I think in such times that we are right now there's a lot of uncertainty there is a lot of fear but what is required by families is to stay calm make the children feel space uh, a safe space they should have a healthy lifestyle at the same time they should build resilience which is very very important because uh, harmony is actually the key word that the, the parents should understand what even very rightly Jasmine pointed out that the parents need to control what is being exhibited in front of the children because it is not what we teach the children but what the children learn themselves uh, by the skills that they be um, incubating which is going to take them uh, to a yes um, sorry I think we are uh, experiencing oh, that uh, uh, yes, Jasmine, are you there with me? 
I can't see your video, Jasmine. Yes, Vijanti, I can hear you. Right. Um, so yes, um, I, I really do as well. Yes, I just totally loved the pointers which you exchanged with us today. Very important one that the children uh, should not be put to a susceptibility where parents are not able to exercise their intelligence of uh, working towards a more calmed atmosphere, a more harmonious atmosphere, because a child is going to be getting affected big time Sorry, Jasmine, I think we are in Kolkata experiencing a bit of a storm outside, uh, which is sort of affecting the, the internet uh, 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 capacity, uh, a lot of wind outside. So maybe that is one of the reasons. But to my viewers, I would want to say that today's session was very interesting with Jasmine. She's been able to share a lot of insights about parenting. And I'll be sharing the recorded version of today's, uh, our interaction on my page. Uh, so if you want to go back and hear the tips that Jasmine has shared with all of us, please do so. Because as I said, it is not what we teach our children, but what we teach them to do for themselves. Uh, learning through their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, understanding is what is going to get them to a long, long way of success. So thank you. Thank you, Jasmine, for being with me today. Because yes, I'm sure the parents learned a lot, a lot of uh, thoughts which will help them to develop that, uh, that connection connection between the, the child and the parent uh, more strong. A lot of to-do activities which they can to, uh, to make this bond stronger. And yes, I'm sure they'll be visiting a conversation back again on my page to hear the different tips that you've given to them. So thank you, Jasmine, once again for being with me today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Bye-bye.